core to our values are family, respect, safety. The most obvious thing we do in the Edmonton area is we have uh, seven people from Goodwill that work at our facility. They have full-time jobs. And so from that, it's been a very gratifying thing for us and for them. And you can see how very small efforts can make very big results in changing people's lives. So well, um, it wasn't immediately obvious the connection between what Be Brave is trying to address. Uh, all of us at one point or another know somebody or, or are aware of somebody who's had issues and this is just a terrific program. When the call came out that said, um, you know, there's some cleaning to be done, of course that's an integral part of our business and safety is an integral part so we're finding fire extinguishers that need to be replaced and so on. So it actually is, uh, it ties very nicely to where we have expertise. And sort of the rule I would use is if you can, you should. We can, and once we became aware of the uh, position, we decided we, uh, we'd help. And then Todd Morrison, who's our uh, day job as our National Services Manager, volunteered to put a team together in a very, very short time. The takeover of uh, the Be Brave Ranch just kind of fit in with our culture. Um, you know, we really believe in um, safety first and family matters, and that's kind of our culture. So. For us, like we're a um, safety, uh, industrial, and janitorial solutions provider. We were able to um, come in and provide some training and uh, give some product for the cleanup of this place and make sure that everybody was doing it safely. And you know, when I talk about the, the culture, um, safety first, you know, we want to make sure that the kids have a, a, a good, safe place to come to. Well, I've heard about Little Warriors through um, various media channels, some friends' involvement uh, over the past few years. And on, in this particular case, what had happened was I, I happened to be away and we saw a Facebook posting um, on the Little Warriors uh, site that they needed some help. And so I reached out to my guys and um, asked if we could get a, a group of guys to go out and, uh, and help them. And, and this was on their own time. And uh, took one phone call and I was out of the country and within an hour at a team of eight people, we made eight calls, we got eight people, and uh, they were there on the Saturday helping away. So that was important for us. We've always taught social philanthropy within our company, meaning we can, we can give back financially, but when times are tight, then that impacts the charities we work with. When we give back socially, uh, it doesn't matter what's happening, we're always able to help people out less fortunate. Um, so our team stepped up and it was, it was more about them than it was about me. So the first time we had went out was, uh, was on a weekend and that's when our, our team actually volunteered their own personal hours and they went out and helped uh, clean the place out. And so, you know, there, there's people within the community that, uh, that help and that's, that's very important. But, you know, when you, when you send crews out there with the materials and the know-how, um, you know, these guys make a big difference and uh, they have their heart in the right place and uh, we, we hope to help the Little Warrior Foundation. Well, we went in there this week uh, and we did uh, just some typical demolition work for them. Um, we're going to be working with some other trades there and we hope to, to continue to, to lend a hand. You know, this is something that, that really strikes a, a chord for me deep. I don't have a personal experience with it, but I, th I think those people around us are all personally affected for life. When you have children and you reflect on something so terrible happening to them, um, you know, they didn't have a choice and, uh, you know, this, this impact is for the rest of their lives. Um, you know, from, from that day forward, they need help and support. I came out to the ranch in the middle of winter when there was still lots of snow on the ground and we trudged around and looked around and as I walked around the property, it, you know, it was very apparent that they have some very old technology here. And with my conversations with Glory, she talks about how they're gonna utilize technology to treat the children and stay in communications with family and stay in communications with therapists. So I thought, you know what, okay, well, we can, we can do some wireless. Maybe we'll add a little bit of unified communications, so voice and video, but we need some back-end infrastructure as well. What we're gonna be putting in for the, the Little Warriors, some of it is pretty typical for the type of deployments we do in mid-enterprise type businesses. So we're installing network switching to operate the facility, and that's gonna enable them to put in closed circuit television and card access. We're also putting a ruckus wireless solution, which enables us to have uh, cordless phones throughout the entire property, as well as support for laptops and iPads. 
Communications across the property will be handled by our Shortel Unified Communications platform. So this enables voice as well as video, instant messaging, integration with email. So it's a full platform. It really allows um, caregivers and therapists to communicate effectively whether they're on the property or off the property. The last piece of the pie that we're putting in is our, our Fortinet Unified Threat Management Appliance. That's a fancy word for a firewall. Basically what we do is we restrict access into the network connections of the property, but we're also filtering the content that the children will be able to look at. We're also supplying something that's a little outside of our scope. We're going to be putting in server infrastructure as well as all the workstations. And that's not typical for our firm, but it's something we do have expertise in. A lot of people ask me why I wanted to, to give this type of donation. It's not that I'm a survivor. I had uh, a childhood with my parents that was full of love. My family was fantastic. We had some tough times where, you know, we were a little hard up. But I have children now. So being able to, to give something back that normally we work with faceless corporations and now we get to work with an organization that's full of love and full of, you know, children who can actually benefit directly from something we're doing. So, you know, the day I came home and I said to Laura, you know, I've got this idea. Do you think we can do it? And she said, you know what, I can't imagine if that happened to our children. What, what do we do? Where do we take them for treatment? There's nowhere to take them right now. You know, we have prevention, but we don't have treatment. So, you know, we had decided at that moment that this is something that we can do that will really benefit our community.